So we're here tonight to uh, give you some more information about the smart meters and I would like to say first of all whatever we offer you as information is information and as you know not to be construed as legal advice or whatever we're not telling you what to do you're the boss at home and you do what you want um, there are some things that we will be talking about that are going to have to be your choice whether you do those things or not, whether you want to protect them and keep the smart meters off of your property. BC Hydro is forgetting that our bodies are electric and they are actually considering us, like, as you will see further down, more like mannequins made out of some kind of plastic. I don't have any device here to show you whatever, but you probably have felt, you know, when you bump your elbow against something that you get what we call an electric shock and it's pretty much like an electric shock. So everything in our, in our bodies actually that, that happens is based on electricity. Our, our muscles are getting electrical impulses from our brain and everything works in electric, on electricity and it's actually such subtle energy, such low voltages and whatever that they are hardly measurable. Now we will see that with the smart meters, we will be exposed to high levels of radio frequencies, electromagnetic fields, and so on and so on, and they they interfere with all this those small pulses that our body our body sends to the organs and the muscles and whatever. So that's going to create havoc at some point. For some people, it happens sooner. For some people, it happens later. But we'll talk about that a little bit further down too. Um, when they bring the smart meters in, as you can see there, it's actually, when you look at it at a bigger scale, it's going to be more than that. They have, according to the manufacturer's information, they have a usable um, distance that they radiate out for three kilometers. So when you're like in an area of three kilometers with dense um, population and houses there, it will be totally blanketed. And what BC Hydro doesn't take into consideration is that they only talk about one smart meter being installed somewhere, that's the only tests that they have done, and the radiation coming off of it. Uh, but we're not, that's not what we're talking about. Um, they're going, we're going to have like a high concentration of those devices, which they then say also that they are not emitting more than the FCC allowable limit, which is not true either, because they were measuring the wrong way. Um, when you just look at what we already have before the smart meters, these are all cell towers all over Canada. Right? If it were a forest, you would probably not be able, I'm exaggerating here, but you could, would probably not be able to walk in between the trees there. Um, there are people who are electro, so there are people who are electro hypersensitive and they have to stay away. Um, some people are very sensitive and they have to, they can't even come into Vernon anymore, for instance, like two, three hours and they're sick. Um, it is um, forecasted by some researchers that um, by the year 2017, we may have up to, excuse me, we may have up to 50% of the population being electro hypersensitive. And a lot of people, in fact, are already hypersensitive but don't know, know it yet. In, in Germany, for instance, um, and that's just the school population, um, the 6 to 15 percent of the, of the kids there that are already considered to be electro hypersensitive to some degree. Uh, the more we, we stay uh, exposed to all this electromagnetic field and radio frequency energy, the more we will become. Um, the more we will become sensitive, it's like an allergy. The more you, you are exposed to an allergen, the, the sooner you will develop uh, an allergy in the end. It's not for everyone, of course, but it looks like there will be very few people in the end who won't be affected by it. Um, there are some, I'm not going to go over all the details too much, um, but there are, uh, for instance, uh, sleep disruption and Depression can be caused by it, and um, a big one is insomnia, um, where people really can't sleep anymore. I have it happening where I'm like completely, completely tired. I go lie down and I'm awake for hours. I can't fall asleep because of it. 
Um, when we talk about adults, you can see here that this is when you hold a cell phone to somebody's head. So the penetration rate is about 25%. For a 10 year old though, you're looking at 50%, and for a five year old, you're already talking about 75%. Now, what is it gonna be for a newborn? Because they have, you know, like hardly any uh, protection. Their water content in their brain and all over their body is also much higher, and it's, it's uh, the water in the cells that starts, you know, uh, vibrating with this energy. And the energy fields that we're surrounded with, the natural ones, are very, very low. Um, even 50%, uh, sorry, 50 cycles per second, I consider to be too high to be natural. Uh, but we're talking about millions of times that that energy goes up and down in sine waves. So this is, this is what scientifically gets used and what um, BC Hydro used to do the tests on. So they've, they've got a, a mannequin, plastic kind of head, and this actually represents a person that is like a big guy, weighing a lot, a lot um, which is only like a, a small percentage of the population that it represents, so that, that flaws the, 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 the results as well. And we don't see any human flesh material here or anything, it's all plastic, and they put a certain liquid in there that's you know like a standard solution in, and then they use some kind of a device, whether it's a cell phone or a smart meter or whatever that radiates, put it at a certain distance, and then they start measuring, because they try to find if that liquid in the top there heats up. That's the thermal effect that they're talking about. But there are other effects that are happening in the body that they don't take into account. Because they, they say when we can't measure thermal effects, then the other effects are, effects are negligible. See? This is a film that was made in Kelowna by uh, a fellow who does uh, thermography. And what he did, he exposed somebody's feet to uh, a magnet magnetic line of flux. And he's got, so that device that he's using can actually measure through infrared the, um, the heat in somebody's body. So you will see that in the end, how much the the temperature will have gone up, and it's exponential. See, like right now it starts going up and up. We're talking about, I believe it's 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So, BC Hydro and a lot of other instances who have uh, financial interests, by the way, uh, usually that's what happens. They, uh, they deny these, these results. So this, this fellow is, who's actually working with us um, has been able to show through the device that he has has made it visible. Um, in California, PG&E, which is uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, has started because of the uh, numerous complaints and effects on people's health. They have started removing the meters already. In the meantime, BC Hydro still keeps saying, we're gonna put them in, we're opt out. In fact, it should be opt in. We should, if we want them, we should, we should say, we should be able to say, we want one. It's not up to them to say, you're gonna have to get one, and we have to opt out. In fact, there is no opt out right now. Um, the Russians, many, many years ago, we're talking about the 50s here, they were discovering that when they had people working near radar, that they were seeing certain effects, and in other like, plants when they were doing certain things, um, they, were for the longest time banning microwave ovens for people. Now, it doesn't mean that certain Russians wouldn't have had microwaves, microwave ovens in their kitchen, but officially it was banned because they knew how bad it is. And in fact, in the eastern countries, um, like uh, Prague, for instance, there was an incident there where even a radio station was outputting only 30 microwatts per square meter, which is quite low for, for us. Um, an antenna, and they shut it down for a while because it was over the limit. In the meantime, they have actually upped their limits because of the opening of the borders and whatever, and we've got uh, Western companies coming in with uh, and armies, with radar, etc., and that's apparently why they have to change the limits, because otherwise they wouldn't have been able to come in. So there's, a, there's all kind of stuff happening behind the scenes that we don't know about unless we start doing our homework. Um, Power lines, 
PFO EMF, and um, it is proven through numerous studies that the leukemia rate in, uh, in children has gone up a lot because of that. And in fact, if you put like a um, fluorescent bulb like that in the ground on your power line, it will light up without being connected to a wire. Um, we like to look at independent studies, real independent studies, not what BC Hygo calls independent studies. I don't think we could say that when a company pays a scientist or a lab for research that that can be an independent study, this you know, financial interest. Now, the Naval Medical Research Institute is like a public institute that um, there's less likely to be financial interests there. What they want to know is what do these waves do? What does that energy do to people? Because we want to find out if our soldiers can be hurt with it, or we could maybe use it to hurt you know, the enemy and people in general, whatever they want to do with it. So that's a more objective study. And they have proven and have come up with numerous results that show what um, the effects are from electromagnetic fields and radio frequencies. So here are some of them. I'm not going to go too much into detail. Um, there's in fact a lot of information, tons of information on the Citizen Specific Technology website and stocksmartmeters.ca. So um, please do a little bit of homework. Here we have um, 574 pages and 360, uh, sorry, uh, 3627 articles um, that we consider to be more independent and objective. Um, not flawed studies and flawed results from um, institutions and researchers who um, are paid by someone to get a certain result. Here we've got an analog meter, and that's a digital meter, and that's a smart meter there. Dan, why did you change that? <laughs> it was just a joke. We want to we wanna try to keep things light a little bit. Um, so this is what most of us still have. Some people got a smart meter, it was like a transition period, and they are not necessarily a smart meter because a smart meter, that's what they look like in the next slide. We've got a bigger picture. So we've got, that's the, uh, that's the plug-in, how they, they test them in the factory. Um, they, when a meter reader can actually still plug into the meter when they come over, and if they want to change certain things locally, then they can do it through that plug-in there. Um, this is open way, that's one other way that we can recognize them. BC Hybrid, that's the ones that we get. That one here, I'm not sure what that uh, is for. It's an antenna. Is it? You're assuming that there's a huge increase. I think that there there's won't a, be. There's a difference between and I think we'll be able to show that. Hydro is adding up all these microsecond bursts of energy, well, is, which are right, only so a fractions of seconds. And they add them all up together, and it comes to two or three minutes a day. And they say, on average, we're only transmitting two or three minutes a day. When in fact, they are transmitting every couple of minutes at a fairly powerful burst of energy. And uh, do you know anything different about that? Can I, you know? No. The, the answer is, is I can't debate that with you because I do not know. I do not know the specifics. So the answer is I can't debate that with you. Okay, so as it stands right now, because I have tested it, I have tested a meter, and, uh, and that is uh, the fact as it stands right now that the meter does transmit all day, every day. Now what I'm asking you to do is find that for sure, okay? If you the chief medical health officer talking here. He doesn't, he apparently doesn't know what he's talking about because he says, I don't have an answer. Right? So those people are supposed to protect us. When we see the reading here on this meter, this is close to its limit. Um, these meters, those particular ones, they go up to 2,000 microwatts per square meter or two watts. 
uh, if they go beyond the range, then the one here in front stays there. And it's it was showing if you paid attention that it actually comes on a regular basis off scale. So that means that this is not even a completely accurate measurement because the, the harmonics are not involved and some other bit. This is technical stuff, but there's a um, Cindy um, Sage, Sage Associates in uh, California has done better measurements, probably not still not complete ones. Um, and they are saying that the meters where they are only supposed to be legally outputting 1,000 microwatts per square meter, they are actually going up to 2,500. That's the real reading. There's a background level. That's what it should be. It's over 2,000. So again, this is elsewhere. This is in Ontario. People measuring and it's still there. It's over limit. I mean, over the limit of what the meter can measure, but it's it's at least two times higher than they're supposed to output. And if you, yeah, if you pay attention, if like around the meter, the the shrub has actually, you know, the leaves are going dry, etc. In fact, we've got a video where there was a healthy bush in California somewhere. They put a whole bank of meters in, and within no time, the bush was dead. They had to take it out. Um, we're getting a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and even plain lies from BC Hydro. Um, they make it look as if it's a good thing, but when, for instance, they say here 99% of the time, they say it's only a couple minutes a day. That's a big lie because when you figure it out, it's 14 minutes and 40 seconds. Seeing is believing, that's what we get here. Right? DCI probably and the other utility companies thought that we were not going to be able to measure what they are doing. Because you know, if you don't have a meter, unless you're sensitive, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, because it's all, you know, this is the only way you can prove it. And that's what we're doing here. This is, this is from BC, um, it's part of the smart grid that they already have in place. This is a, what I call a relay station. This one collects all the data from the meters around it and then sends it to BC Hydro or elsewhere because they, they don't necessarily do it. So we see three brands on here, Hytron, which is the maker of those um, devices. The new ones will probably become Cisco according to the uh, research that I've been doing. And we also see on there BC Hydro and let me see because I'm a little bit on the magnitude. So 
So right there, so it's not, not clear, but it says Talus. So there are at least three companies involved, and there's another one now involved, that, which is Cisco, which is a, some of you actually have Cisco routers in your home, um, the wireless ones. So these are just industrial strength ones, and what I'll be talking about later. Getting a little bit higher too. 582. 600. 603. 654. That's interesting. So, this is actually, it's not like the other ones. So, there is always <coughs> apparently a meter in the neighborhood connect, talking to all the other ones. And then that one sends its information to that relay station that, that I just showed you that then sends everything through to BC Hydro or wherever it goes. Uh, BC Hydro has been saying, as other uh, utility companies have been doing, that. The, on average, the radiation coming out of a smart meter is about 100 times less than a cell phone. Well, we've got, this person wasn't even paid to do the study, he was just interested, wanted to look at the numbers in a proper way, and we'll have a, a graph afterwards. And he has shown that, the, that it's actually the other way around. The smart meters are emitting at least 100 times if you have a look, good look at the graph, maybe you could switch to it. Um, <clears throat> here, this is what the, the um, cell phone emits. So we're talking about the highest one is 0.25. Here we see 40. If you do your math, you'll see that you've got a difference of 160 more, not 100, 100 less than a smart meter. One of the reasons why they pretend, in fact, that they want to save energy is they don't really want to save energy because they, they will also, through the smart meters now, they will have the capacity to bring in time of use billing. So when we are using most of our power, that's when they will actually apply a higher rate to what we're using. And in off-peak times, it will be the same as what we're paying now, unlikely less than what we're paying now. So it's another way to get more money from us. And since the 90s, there has been a plan in the making. Um, right now, they're selling our power. They have to give it to us because it's our utility company. They have to give it at us because of the regulations um, at a certain low um, um, amount, like what we pay per kilowatt hour, which is about six to nine. Um, I think we've got the right because it's it's our province, it's our utility company, and whatever. But they would like to sell more elsewhere. Um, that's why they're trying to make us save energy and get more money for the same kilowatt hours that they otherwise would give to us. And they're selling, as we know, to California and further down. Now there are plans that in in the making, or they at least have been talking about it, that they would from BC. Because they're putting in a lot of, if you have noticed, they're putting in, in a lot of smaller hydro dams and whatever. Um, and the idea is to put a, um, a power line going this way to Asia to sell it over there. So they're saying, now all of a sudden they're saying where before, in fact, if you look at the statistics over the last over the last five years, demand for electricity in DC has been around 50,000 gigawatt hours and hasn't changed. And they say we need we need more because they're projecting that it's going to go up 40 percent over the next 20 years, which is probably that power that they wanted to sell elsewhere. That's what they're planning to do. Uh, so that they're not. 
most people are not wasting energy because you know like even an ordinary bulb is not that much power consumption it's heating and whatever and people are not going to cook themselves in their houses right um, so right now bc alone exports 2.6 billion worth of extra electricity to the u.s mainly i think um, california so they want to do more and as you can see here that's where they talk about russia alaska and bc to connect them through the bearing street and uh, send our power over there, not to our benefit. So another thing is, if you want to know what's happening, just follow the money. So there's a lot of people, most of those people here, they have been appointed by the BC Liberal government. And when we switch to the next slide, we'll get a little bit more detail. So the company installing the meters, but they will probably be involved in more things later on. Um, is, is Corex, which is owned by CAI, which is an investment company, specialized in going into places, into companies, and flowing the hooks, etc., and making those companies go bankrupt. Now, four BC Hydro people have financial interests in this company, and automatically in Corex, who is installing the meters. The Corex people, in fact, are getting bonuses, the installers, for every meter they, pay, they put in. So they, they go very fast, and that's why they also sometimes even get aggressive and neglect signs that people put up and whatever, and break the law to be able to install as many meters per day as they can, because they have it every time for every meter they get a bonus. Here is another interesting thing. Um, where it is actually Corex installing and 4BC Hydro, it's very interesting that they have both names on the same vehicles and it's like they've got it in all of them. So don't be surprised that in the near future, all of a sudden, because we'll talk about the uh, accounting of BC Hydro as well, that we see a change happening there where all of a sudden the whole thing becomes Corex. It's in fact the BC Auditor General who blew the whistle on Hydro's 2.2 billion in voodoo accounting in just one year time. So what they're doing, they're deferring their debt and they're making their books, books look like they're still making profit so that in fact, they can, the CEOs, etc., they can pay themselves bonuses because they're making profit, but they're not, they're not doing real accounting. It is allowed to do this kind of accounting, but if you keep doing it, at some point, you actually make the company go bankrupt. And that's, that's very clear, that's what they want to do. We've had numerous people who know more say that, and in fact, um, I talked to someone, uh, of our, actually one of our people, uh, quite a while ago, who used to work for BC Hydro and got fired for talking too much, and she, uh, I guess maybe through the Freedom of Information Act, got a hold of the accounting of BC Hydro, gave it to a specialized accountant and said, could you please have a look at it and give me your point of view on what's happening here? And he said, one conclusion, they're making it go bankrupt. It's as clear as can be, he said. Uh, as I said, hydro pay bonuses to non existent profit. You know? So, um, then before the smart, they were bringing in the smart meets, because everything is planned beforehand, they were, uh, there, there are changes in the freedom of information law and also in privacy laws, etc because those devices can actually collect information that have to do with our privacy and can be used, but also abused. Then another thing is, why would a company, in fact a, a, a public utility company, have to spend $8.6 million on a propaganda campaign It's not advertising? And this, the ads are just absolutely stupid. Um, why would they have to do that if those things are so good for us? We would just, you know, there would, there would be no problem, but they want to pull the, the wool over our ass, and by, by talking about what they want to talk about, they are avoiding talking about the stuff that we might not want to hear. Um, as I said before, this is one of the things they want to do, and I'm not inventing this, because this is already happening in, in Ontario. Ontario has had their um, smart meters for around two years now, and we'll show you some other videos where um, we have the proof. Um, 
they're not, they're, again, they're not telling us. Um, they're hiding all that from us. Because if we were to know, if they were to be honest with us and, and with um, municipalities and whatever, then they would never get this far and they know that. That's why they were lying and cheating and whatever else. I have noticed a huge increase in my bill. Like, and I have uh, a lot of laundry, and I should probably be doing it at night, but that never works out. You know, when I'm home in the day, that's when I'd like to get some things done, like laundry, dishwashing, and with the smart billing, you have to wait till the evening anyway, or the weekend. So that was, I felt bad for people who are home who need to heat themselves and do their chores, like uh, they'll get penalized for doing them during the day. Crazy. I'm telling them I'm paying more hydro than my rent. So these people are already experiencing the effects of having a smart meter on their places and most of them probably are not even aware of what it's going to do to their health. Um, this is all nice and well. We're living in economic times where people are struggling. We'll see rates go up, time of use billing, etc., etc. So people are going to have to start making a choice. You know, are we going to pay our hydro, or are we going to maybe even you know eat a little bit less in some cases? Because there's, there are certain fixed costs that you have to pay, or you're in the street, or you don't have power or heat or whatever. So this is what is being pushed down our throats. Now, is the wireless smart grid secure? Well, <laughs> let's have a look at all the companies and government institutions and everything else. And those are like the really big ones, even NATO and the, uh, the Pentagon was hacked into. BC Hydro system all of a sudden is as safe as can be. You know, nobody ever will be able to hack into that. Um, here we've got security professionals speaking out about the insecurity of the uh, and uh, about the smart meters when they when they, they are put in. In fact there are two young fellows in Germany, uh, it's on YouTube somewhere, who did a really good one uh, where they they hacked into a system, uh, a utility company system. Actually it's not a utility company system, it's a, a company who is actually collecting the data for a utility company and is also doing, I believe, the billing for it. It doesn't, make, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, so they were able to, in no time, hack into it. They flawed the, they were actually sending their own information out to the utility company, basically reduced the bill to next to nothing. And they were even able to show that um, this technology, because everything has an energetic footprint, like um, for instance, a motor, a certain kind of motor, will have, when you look at the graphs, this is all very technical, but just to make you aware, that when you look at those graphs, you will be able to tell whether this is, for instance, a compressor from a fridge or something like that, because they take like a huge um, current to start up, to give you an example. They were even able, those two young fellows were even able to show that they were able to detect in other words, the utility company or whoever gets a hold of it of this information that is being sent out by those smart meters. Um, wait, if you if you do an analysis, you can actually tell which video a person is watching. Okay, because a particular video has certain like when the volume is high in a certain part, like a very short part. Your, your power consumption goes up, and this whole relationship between, like when your screen, for instance, is dark, you've got lower consumption, and that whole mix of, of power consumption can easily be analyzed. Um, one of the things that BC Hardware says that it wants to do something about is power theft. Um, Initially, they were talking about 30 million a year in theft. That was in 2010, that's not that long ago. Now all of a sudden in 2011, it's gone up to one, 100 million. So I guess some people are making some really, are doing some really good business somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about grow-ups. Uh, grow 
Um, so where does an, all of a sudden that 300% increase come from? It's just, you know, they manipulate the numbers, that's all they do. Um, you know, it's their numbers, we don't know where they got them from, so how do we know that they're right? And in fact, this is probably going to be the ropes. They're going to get together, they, they will be hiring hackers, and as I said before, they won't even have to bypass their mirror anymore, which they were doing, and not even have generators anymore, and just hack, hack into the dial and fly it in the way they want. Um, there are other issues with the smart meters, as we can see here, this is where a smart meter used to be. It's all black and charred because it um, caught fire. This is, uh, in, this is in Ontario, and there's numerous examples in, uh, in uh, California, because they, they were put in sooner over there too. The problem with Ontario and California was that California, there is some more activity happening against the smart meters. Um, Ontario was sooner and they were totally unprepared. So they were caught by surprise and that's why there was not much happening. Um, now they're going into Quebec, um, will be the next one here in Canada. This is an example of what a smart meter fire looks like. I guess you may want that on like a New Year's Eve or something like that, but not when you choose to. Just look at what's coming out of there. Um, this is outside of the house. In a way, that's what happens when you're lucky. But our house wiring is not designed to carry the radio frequencies that those meters emit. And when you've got like a, a, a ground that is not completely the way it's supposed to be, and other like little defects or old wiring, certainly the older wiring, um, it can't handle the, those peaks and whatever. There's also dirty electricity involved um, that affects the, the nice, what is supposed to be a nice sine wave. It puts all kinds of little jagged lines on there, and that's why we see a lot of electronics fail too, because of that. So any digital equipment will do that, will create those, uh, those, those peaks and that dirty electricity. Um, here we've got fire investigators um, investigating and it's actually, this I believe is in New Zealand, no this is Australia. Um, and so fire investigators are actually becoming very aware of this, pro of this problem and one of the first things they will look at if when there is a fire these days was there a smart meter? Now, when you have a, a fire happening, um, we don't know what's going to happen. We have had certain people who have contacted their insurance companies and they got the reply that they would not pay out, but they would go after BC Hydro. They're saying that, but you know, other companies will say, not our problem, BC Hydro's meter, you know, go talk to them and you're probably not going to get anything the damage that is not your place. We already had a fire happening in Nanaimo, in a house. Um, there are people, when the smart meter gets installed, because it's not compatible with their house wiring, because it's too old usually, um, they have to, they lose their wire, their, their power, and they have to have their whole house rewired. Can you imagine that? At their own cost. And like when you've got a, an older house, it may work, it may not work. You might be in for a big surprise there. Now, this is my personal point of view on this. Um, I don't want whether it's a wired or a wireless smart meter. I don't even want a digital meter because um, I know too much um, of the techn technological background of those things, even a, a digital one. Uh, the um, analog meters have done their job for since we've had them like for over 50 years. Um, 
now all of a sudden they're not accurate enough because they want this stuff in because it will allow them a lot of other things to that I will talk about after the break um, so Italy where BC Hardware is saying oh it's too expensive and it can be done Italy has 27 million wire mills again this is my personal point of view on it I wouldn't even want a wire meter but it is possible as an alternative and it's not more expensive because it actually costs a little bit less when we look at our analog babies that we've had for that long and we already have them they don't need to be replaced so we actually have to add that cost in a way to what a smart meter costs um, because they don't need the analog ones don't need to be replaced um, it's only $50, and I have found that hard to believe, but it's a fact, because someone in California has made a kit available for the people down there, and the kit, analog meter, with a DVD, some instructions, and some legal documentation included, he is selling for $50, so it must be true, right? Um, when they put a new smart, in, a new smart meter in, um, they are at least $150 per meter, purchase price, but installed, we're looking at over $500. We are going to have to pay for that, one or other. So all kinds of news articles, costly smart meter, um, with fuzzy savings, there are basically no savings. In Sweden they did a study and the highest savings they got, and not everywhere, was 1%. So when you look at the um, expenses involved in putting the whole system in. We're talking close to $1 billion. Again, that's going to come out of our pockets. But as we know, their projects, like when they, when they have a business plan like this, they will try to make it look less. And we have, from observing where the, the other areas had their meters installed, that the actual cost is around Average, on average 2.5 times higher so we will be looking probably at 2.5 billion instead of close to 1 billion in the end and that's not even taking into account parts of the smart grid because they're not even talking about that yet and all the technology and infrastructure that, we, that they will need to store data have people look after them and whatever um, they keep talking about making our economy grow, while this is totally the opposite of making our economy grow. Um, this, the analog meters that we have here are usually, like right here, some Galvo brands that are made, if you want to check it on your meter, they're made on in Ontario. Um, the, they have a long lifespan, which is, this is what I call green, not what they call green. And the smart meters, have an expected lifespan of 10 to 15 years. Now, we're, this is something similar to computer technology, for instance, where you step into a system, once you make that change, you're caught into it, and we know how often we have to upgrade, buy new programs and whatever, and after five years, if you want to keep a computer up to date and running properly, you're, you're looking at buying a new computer. This is the same situation here that they're not talking about. And I've done some more research. They, in fact, it's an immature system when we start talking about not only the smart meters, but how they connect and, and them and how they are going to retrieve the data and work with that. Um, they've got a number of systems going, and we will see situations where certain utility companies will have bought a certain brand and model, and after a while, they will find out, let's say, they bought a Windows system and now all of a sudden they're going to have to switch to you know, Linux or something like that because it's, it's not, they can't use it for what they want to use it for. They need to buy another computer, or in this case, a smart meter, because that won't work. Um, and then what DC Hydro, in a, in a rush, they really want to destroy the analog meters so that when we ask for them to be put back, that they can say they're gone. They're destroying it almost right away. We've got a total of 700 meter readers in BC um, who are employed, I suppose, by BC Hydro. Um, most of them will lose their jobs 
and they will lose them job, their jobs because we see news article, uh, sorry, ad, ads in the newspapers, and, et cetera, and on the internet, where they are actually, through another company, I believe it is, are hiring meet and readers because they are realizing that they will still need them. So what are they doing? They're getting rid of their people who have been working for them for a long time, who they have to pay more, and now they're getting other people who they will have to pay less. Okay? Same old story, every time. Um, so we had uh, information technology workers fired in September last year. Um, they will probably have to hire more, depending what where they are going to do their stuff with their data. Because Hydro One, for instance, uh, one of the two big companies in Ontario, <coughs> has outsourced it, for instance, 100 call center to Paris and France. I'm actually surprised it's not in Asia somewhere. Um, as I said before, the meters are needed, the analog meters are made in Ontario, or at least in the States. Um, the ITRON meters are made in, in Washington, state of Washington, um, near Seattle, with parts from Taiwan and China. I will actually be showing later on a little clip that is part of the bigger video that they have where they are showing how they make the, the meters and how they actually basically assemble them. Um, So as I said before, somebody's going to have to pay for you know all this, and I can't see who else it's going to be than us, right? And people have seen, as I said, uh, you've seen it in the videos already in Ontario. They're paying more and more. Um, there are more problems that I've already covered this year. There is information on the internet. As a, a fellow, an engineer who used to work for a company like Itron, um, Census, I guess. And he got fired because he was telling the board all the time, you know, there's things here that are wrong. The meters are overheating. We've got faulty components. We've got, um, they're not calibrated properly. They're not registering the real power usage. He actually tested meters that were um, registering seven times more than the real power usage. And that was in the lab before they went out, you see. Smart meter tax machines are doubling and tripling the hydro costs of my constituents. I just received this month's hydro bill for my constituency office in Perth and couldn't help but notice that since the smart meter was installed in my office, the usage has now doubled from the same time period last year. More than 8,000 people saw their usage triple last year according to Ontario Hydro. 8,000 people. Speaker, I did bring in my Hydro bill, which I'll bring over. I see the Minister of Energy is here. Member. This is not during the street night. This is like, can you get it more official than this in Ontario? So one of the things, the benefits that they talk about is better service. I don't know. Quicker response. When we have a power outage, they'll know sooner. We've still got phones to call them. It's always worth it for, so why do they need smart meters for that? And so, you know, no meter will get your power on sooner because they can't do it. And on the contrary, the, the meter can actually be disconnected. The first station prints a serial number on the bottom. The next station then flips the base plate upright and installs the components of the remote disconnect switch. This switch enables the electric company to switch power on and off from any location. And switch it on again. So if you don't pay your bill, from could be from China, because it's all done through the internet and computer. So this fellow, this fellow's fridge blew after the meter was installed, probably because of the dirty electricity, maybe, you know, like older wiring and whatever. So he doesn't look very happy to me. Now, have a look here. If those meters were so safe, like I wouldn't want to walk around like that, even working. <laughs> right? I, I, it's not even clear what is going underneath there. See?
as I said before in Sweden, you know, consumption consumption patterns only changed by one percent. That was probably because because of bringing the smart meters in, you know, people started thinking we should save, and even if they hadn't had smart meters, they could still have achieved that one percent. You know, just because of awareness. And if they were to just spend all their money that they're spending on education and making people aware how you can save the most power and so on and so on, not with silly, you know, spiral bulbs who are one of the biggest health hazards around, um, but with real information and education, that's where they could be saving energy. But that's where, it, again, it shows that there's a lot more behind this. Um, so we should be able to save 15%. Well, I could show you my bills. I don't know how I could even send like, save like 50 cents a month or two months on it. Um, again, meters don't change cons consumption. It's you who switches on the power. Unless like in some states, like for instance, Texas, you give the utility permission at certain times of the day to switch off your refrigerator, uh, sorry, your uh, air conditioner or your heating, but you have to give them consent. And then they actually do it remotely because some of the, the new, all the new appliances that we will be getting, and some people already have them in their houses without knowing it, will have a, like, a technology built in that will communicate with the smart meter. The smart meter has two systems in it. It's got a, a radio, device built in that communicates with the utility company and then there's another one that communicates with everything in the house and will actually also be able to communicate with the water smart meters and the gas smart meters that we will be getting in fact like uh, in places like armstrong penticton they are already installing smart water meters same technology radio frequency um, all health hazards so in other words when, and that is technically possible, they, they, they write, when you look at their professional literature and their videos that they're putting out for the utility companies, that's where you get the real information, then you see that BC Hydro, for instance, could tap into another market when they start doing the, the data transfer and the billing maybe for Fortis or for uh, the city of Vernon for the, the billing for water consumption, they could make money there are we ever going to see any of that money? I doubt it. That's probably going to be on our books somewhere because it, it, be, it will look like it's a different company or it isn't. Another issue is it's not only affecting humans, it's also affecting every living being and beyond because those frequencies are so high and so fast that they actually they penetrate everything, they go right through everything. And there are now engineers, structural engineers, who are getting really concerned because our buildings, I don't think we could even uh, design them properly to withstand those extremely fast, like very small vibrations. So what's happening is that the, the structure of any material deteriorates a lot faster than it would do in a natural way. So we could see buildings fall apart, and in fact, there are already things happening that look like they may already be caused by this kind of frequencies. But it's very difficult to find a direct link because there are so many things in our environment that it becomes very difficult to say, yeah, it's that, or it's that, you know. Um, that's what makes it difficult. So bees are affected, birds are affected. Uh, bees don't find their way back to the hives because they've got a kind of GPS system if we want to call it that way, that is bombarded with those strong signals. And those bees don't they don't they don't hear their own signals anymore, but they get they get affected by the stronger signals that are being put out by smart meters and similar technology. Um, birds that are migrating who don't find their way back. There's a lot of um, birds dying when they are commuting between their <laughs> homes that they have in different locations. Um, there was in, I believe it was in September, yes, the um, Union of uh, British Columbia Municipalities had a week-long meeting where they talk about all kinds of different things they want to talk about, and they voted um, 
they had a chance to vote for a moratorium on the smart meters. There were, um, it was 55% vote for, for pro moratorium. Now, Christy Clark and Rich Coleman, our energy minister, are just ignoring that vote and saying, we're going to put them in anyway. We don't care what you think, what you want, we're doing it anyway. So, after that, we have had, right now, it's actually 31 municipalities who have voted for a moratorium again with local. And when you look here, according to Bill 23, 2008 of the BC Public Health Act, Section 83, a municipality, when it is made aware or becomes aware of a health hazard, this is pretty strong legal stuff here, right? If they don't respect it, they will be able to be held um, criminally liable. Um, you know, and we could even say if you had the information, it was with intent. We don't have all the, the uh, municipalities here because um, Oliver and Surrey John uh, joined recently. Surrey was there the last one, so we've got 31 and we're hoping, we're working very hard in getting more and more municipalities on board with this. Now, some of us are a bit older and we go, well, you know, we'll survive it. Um, but what about our kids and our grandkids and, you know, coming generations? When are we going to leave them? Um, and we're, not only that, but we're losing our, de like, our de democratic rights are not being respected. And again, you see here in the bottom, moving from a democracy to a dictatorship style of government, a pure dic 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 sorry, dictatorship. I don't want to say that word. <laughs> I don't like it. So, thanks to people like this, you know, who are making a lot of money at the expense of all of us. And they don't care about our health. You know, the thing is, if we know that there is corruption happening and whatever, and if they were to stay within certain boundaries, sure they are greedy, but if they could stop somewhere, you know, most people wouldn't complain. I would even be fine with it. But this is going, this is going a little bit too far, I think, you know, because the greed just continues and it doesn't, never seems, seems to be enough. And then all the, uh, the health issues that we get with it. So, Health Canada says it's fine, you know, no problem with smart meters, but that's what they said about all those things too, right? Before, don't worry. It's fine. So, some, um, I'm mostly representing citizens to save technology, but we have a coalition to start, uh, to stop smartness, so to stop smart meters, um, and we are working very, very closely together, um, and I know that to be a fact. So there's basically no difference, like we're brothers and sisters, it should actually say there, not .org even, but .fam, family. <laughs> Some of us know that. So if you don't have a meter yet, do whatever you can, do whatever you want to do, but do whatever you can, I would say, to keep it off of your property. There are a lot of situations where even one meter is put on the outside of a house, on the inside of the house, there's a person sleeping there, like with their head right next to it. And they don't only read it outwards, like they, it's like 360 degrees around, around you. Um, so what can you do? The nice thing, and that's one of the reasons why I, I started helping with this, is that we have some tools to protect our, ourselves and we're actually fine tuning them more and more. So right now, uh, if you go to this uh, Citizens for Safe Technology website, or we have action kits available here tonight, you can actually, um, you send in a registered mail that lets BC Hydro know that you do not consent to them putting a the meter on. Because if you, they go by implied consent, so if you don't um, tell them that you don't want it, I don't know, at some point, I think it was three, four months ago, they put a little sheet of paper with your head. Who noticed that? When they were talking about smart meters and when they were saying, this is a worldwide plan, and it is. Um, hardly anybody noticed. 
And that's where they probably said, yes, we officially let you know that we are doing this, and through their advertising campaign on TV, which is not really talking about smart meters at all. So it's up to you to go into action and let them know that you don't want it. And because if you don't, they say, you didn't say anything, you know, so we assume that you want it. Um, there's more things you can do. You can post a no trespassing sign so that you can you uh, keep the Corex people off because it's not, as I said, BC Hydro is in, who is installing them, it's a, a contractor um, or part of the company. Because one of the things that may happen when they make BC Hydro go bankrupt, and this was already in the making before the smart meters, it was becoming obvious, um, they're going to sell BC Hydro for next to nothing to a company that's probably already planned who it's going to be, and it could be Corex, in fact. Um, this, is a, this is something, it's actually, the smart meter thing is giving us an opportunity to start working together again. Because I, like myself, for instance, I'm very independent, I can look after myself, whatever, but in this, I cannot look after myself because I can keep a smart meter off of my property, but if all my neighbors around me have one, it won't, it won't even matter if I have 100 people or more around me because when you saw in the beginning there how far it stretches out that signal. Um, so we really need to start working together and in a common effort to keep those things out. I'm not, again, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm encouraging you. Um, then, we're working, so here the number is not correct, it needs to be updated. We're working on moratoriums and whatever. And another thing is that um, you can lock your meter. You don't want to prevent um, BC Hydro from reading your meter. You want to make sure that they can still read the meter. But the safest way to protect yourself is to lock your meter. And if they do come on, onto your property with a no trespassing sign, they basically break the law, they violate your rights, then you've got legal grounds to stand in court and you have proof. So what you need to do if you go this route is take pictures of everything, even make sure you've got witnesses. Your um, non-consent letter needs to be sent in by registered mail, so you've got that number. You can do it with your neighbors or friends or whatever, put 10 of, 10 of the forms in one envelope and it's cheaper, you know, somebody can take care of it because some people don't know how to do those things or are not aware of it, whatever, so help each other. Um, as I said, the, the, the lock is the best way to go. So this is, these are some of the examples of um, what people have done. It depends on your situation. Um, the locks work in most um, situations. Mike will be telling you more about that but sometimes you have to go another route. See, this is a simple way, as long as it works, uh, because it, it prevents them from taking that clamp, that ring that keeps the meter in, in your meter box from taking that out and exchanging the meter. Because once the meter is gone, it's going to be very, very difficult to get your analog meter back. Um, so we'll keep that for, for later, this one, because that's what Mike is going to talk about. Um, if you already have a meter, you first want to check that it's not just a digital one, uh, because they are around. Um, if you're sure that it's a, a smart meter, we have special forms to send to BC Hydro where you ask them to remove them. Um, whether that's going to happen or not, we don't know, but if you don't make the effort, it certainly isn't going to happen. Going to happen. Um, and all, if you need more action kits, we have them available. They are also downloadable from the Citizens for Safe Technology websites. And if you end up on the Stop Smart Meters uh, website, they link to, to each other. And there's, as I said, tons and tons of information there. Lots of updates every day, and videos and other things you can watch. Um, this is um, some of the CSD people and Stop Smart Meters people who were standing outside of the building where BC Hydro was whining and dining the uh, mayors and some council members who were at the meeting there for a whole week. Those people were braving the weather and the cold and the rain and so because of that action most likely I would say 
Uh, we got that uh, moratorium voted on that was unfortunately from ignored by our government. A very democratic step was taken there. Um, this is a big one here. See, because it's not only about the smart meters. They, we let them divide us and not communicate with each other, not work together. We have to stand up, but it was, it's only going to happen when we are united and work together again. So these are the websites here. There's another website. Remember the HST that came in in the referendum? So we didn't know this when we started this, but apparently that law that allows us to do a referendum, it's only every, I'm using, okay, I've got it now, it's five years? Three, no, three. 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 Three years a year. So only every three years we can have a re referendum about one subject. So this sounds very democratic too. Okay, just, just check. Okay, then let's go. I'm hopeful. I'm hoping that in fact the people will rise up against the smart meters because the issue is so much like the HSD. It's the government imposing, uh, uh, imposing something on the people. The smart metering program enables us to create a modern... Group. They were talking about going green, they're showing the countryside, they're showing families, they're saving us money. I'm like, oh, what commercial is this? And in the end, they talked about smart meters. It's almost subliminal. It's, it's not true. They're not actually going to save us money. BC Hydro's accounting is distorted. So what is the real reason why smart meters are coming? And they're going to charge you more money when you use your power at peak time. So it's not a, it's not a consistent, regular power consumption and money that you are going to be paying like you did in the past, everything is going to go up. Plus, we are going to pay for the installation of these smart meters. This is a one billion dollar tax placed on the people of British Columbia without a single word of debate allowed in the legislature. We have recently the Union of BC Municipalities voting, uh, as I understand it, a large majority to have a moratorium on the installation of these smart meters. And yet, Christy Clark and Rich Coleman say they don't care. This is not really about saving energy. It's not really about protecting the environment. It's talking about consolidating control. The smart meter basically watches everything that goes on in the house down to the microsecond. It tells them what was turned on, when it was turned on, how long it was used for, and that's all data. That's all private stuff. With this new technology, you no longer have privacy in your own home. There's a device put to the side of your house that basically knows what's happening in the house, what you're doing, when you leave, when you come, when you go on vacation. And eventually, of course, every appliance you buy will have a device that connects to the smart meter and um, they'll know all the more still, they'll even know what you're cooking. I think there's some money being made here at the expense of uh, people's privacy and definitely at the expense of their health. Here's another layer of radiation that independent scientists have been saying for years is harmful. Not potentially harmful, it's harmful. I started feeling sick. It started with a rash. We couldn't really sleep well. I actually got headaches. I certainly don't want these waves bombarded into my home at my children. We believe there's going to be a lot of people that will be looking in the future to have some protection from these smart meters that are currently being installed in this building. 59,000, 60,000, there we go. What right does any corporation, any government organization particularly, have to expose people on a daily basis, on a 365 a year, 24 hour a day, uh, basis to something that can harm them. A Nanaimo mother is fuming after the installation of a smart meter led to smoke and then an all-out power outage at her home. I'm standing right now in front of my own meter. I've uh, put up a, a kind of generic sign that's available online 
that asks, um, uh, that acknowledges that BC Hydro has a right to come and check my meter, but it says that I don't consent for, for the, them to change the technology to Wi-Fi smart meters. And although there are neighbours of mine who have had their meters changed, this seems to have at least held them off for now. Everybody needs to stand up and see that this is not okay. Serge Valencourt is refusing to let BC Hydro change his meter out. There's no way in God's green earth an installer can say that he has my consent. And he's not alone. Myself, I'm locked up. They're locked up. He's locked up. He's locked up. I could take you down the street and probably show you 10 homes on this street only because a few people have had the opportunity to do research and they're saying no. The government is, is, is not prepared to tell the truth and it's not prepared to have a debate. And if that's the case, we only have one thing left and that's people power. Take a stand and stand up for your rights and refuse these meters and speak out to your MLA and everyone you can. It's Big Brother. We gotta stop it. And now is the time to stop it, not after it's happened. We've got, we've got a break coming up uh, soon. Uh, Mike is going to talk a bit loud about the um, smart meter locks and the action kits. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't like talking than that. I'm sure you can hear me. I've been told I've got a big mouth. Uh, most of this has been said already, what I'm going to say. Every one of us has no 10 people, do we not? Read your, if you have these packs, action kits, read them. If you can, maybe uh, punch out on your uh, copier, punch out a bunch of these. Go see your neighbors and just go talk to them. Leave it to them, give it to them. You know, it, it, it's not very much to print these out. There's some letters in here, forms that you can send to your, to uh, Hydro as well as the, to let them know that you're thinking of them, because I'm sure they like to know. But uh, basically, people power, right? So you know 10 people, they know a few people, pass it on. So it's just by word of mouth. This is the time that we can actually take charge of what we've got here. And this is the year that we have to do this. We don't have much time on this. Uh, a lot of us have been trying, like we've been doing this for the last couple months, and I've talked to a lot of people, and they're choked. We're all choked. Because it's really personal. It's to your house. It's where you live. It's right beside your bedroom. Think about it. It's very, very close to us. Uh, like I said at the end of the meeting, I'm doing this for my grandkids. I don't care about myself. Every day I've got on this planet right now, I'm lucky. But it's my kids, my grandkids that I'm thinking about. And yours. So basically, read through this as much as you can and tell a friend. And that's all I can really suggest to do tonight. And because it's your neighborhood. Because if it's not on your house, it's on the neighbor's house. And it will affect you. So think about the people part. We've got it. We're the voters. So this year we can really change the things around a lot. Now, this is only a device. You don't have to take it, you don't have to buy it. Think of something of your own. But cover up that meter so they can at least meet, read it, put up that, that form in front, say, 
you're welcome on my lot to read it and that's it. But have something just to, you know, make it a little harder for them to do anything to it. So I'm not pushing these, these are just advice, advice to help, that's it. I don't have much else to say, so... How much? Turn, sorry, how much are these? They're 25 bucks, 5 bucks for these. So... And they look kind of nice, eh? Yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> All right, thanks.